Welcome everybody, in this video you're going to learn how to import modules dynamically in Python. Importing modules dynamically can help with scalability and extensibility and will generally make your code a little bit cleaner. My name is Anton, welcome to the Raw Coding YouTube channel and let's check this out. Currently in our scraping project we have the scraping folder where we have our scrapers over here. For every scraper that we build our folders grow this way. If we look in the setup.py file What's going to happen is every single time we're going to add a scraper, the console scripts are going to grow along with it. This can be considered unscalable. Not only every single time you add a scraper, you need to remember to add it here. Your application doesn't automatically know about what scrapers you have and don't have. And that is something that we can fix. Let's take a look at how. We're gonna go into the scraping folder and we will add a main.py file over here. Inside the main.py, we will import and then import lib. This is a special module specifically for importing modules dynamically. And when we use the word dynamically, that means we just don't know what modules we might or might not have. We're just going to try to import something. Well, we'll take import lib and on here, we're going to find the import module function. Just how at the top, we would type out import scraping.blog.main. We can take whatever we're trying to import this way and supply it as a parameter to the import module function, just like this. This is going to give us a module. So module equals, we will print this out, module, open up the terminal. We will make sure that we're going to go into the scraping folder where we will find the main function. I'll execute the main function with Python 3. So Python 3 main. And here we will see that we successfully find the module. If I replace main with something else, this is going to throw an error. Specifically, we'll get the module not found error. If we take this error, we'll go over here and we're going to try to catch this error. So try this operation and then accept this error. If this error did occur, that means the module is not found. So interpolate a string module whatever module we are going to be supplying. So for now, let's put this over here, not found. Now we can replace whatever we had here with main and blog can be another thing that we're substituting. And since we're importing the main function, this is indeed going to be the scraper that we're trying to surface. The module that we're trying to import will be specified via the input for now. If we come over here, we run our application. Obviously, I forgot to take the module over here and supply it to the interpolated strings. Let's bring the terminal back up, rerun the application. If I type in blog, nothing gets printed, no problem. If I rerun this and I type in something random, we're gonna see that this module is not found. Now, we've seen that when we import the module, something along the lines of this is going to be printed. All of our scrapers, blog, shop, and wiki, if we take a look at main.py, they all have a default function, okay? And what we want to do is we want to grab the default function from the main file that we're importing from whatever scraper. We can use the get attribute function on the scraper to get the default function. This is going to be the entry point to our scraper. If we then put a print statement over here and supply the entry point, open up the terminal, rerun the application, supply blog, we will see that this is indeed a default function. We can then take the entry point and try to invoke it, just like we would a function. If we come back over here, rerun the application, I want blog, we will get an index error, but the index error is here because we don't get the argument when we're invoking the default function inside main.py of the blog scraper. That means we're successfully invoking the function, we just don't have the arguments. And the arguments to the script are actually contained within this main.py. So let's surface them here. If we grab import sys and then the module, instead of getting it this way, let's supply sys over here and then argv and we're going to get the first one. And we can also use print to debug what kind of arguments we're getting over here. So sys argv. If we open up the terminal, rerun the application, we will see that only main.py was contained. If we then supply blog, so we want to invoke blog, we're still going to get the same error when we didn't supply the number. So if I say I want to scrape two pages of the blog, we will still get the error. Nothing has changed. That's because we're still reusing 
the same collection between the two files. What we want to do is we want to take the left hand side of the collection and supply it as an argument to the underlying script. Now because we have a wiki and that depends on more than one parameter, that might have something like two parameters, we want to skip the first two parameters and supply the rest. If we open up Python 3 and we will take what we have printed over here, we'll take variable A and assign that to variable A. Now variable A is a collection of whatever things. If we want the very first item, we do something like this. If we want everything past the first item, we do something like this. And if we want everything past the second item, we do something like this. So this is the command we would use to supply arguments into the default function that we're importing. Let's collapse down the terminal. We will use sysargv, place this over here and supply everything past the second argument. We will now go into main.py over here. And instead of sysargv, we will use args. And I keep saying sysargv instead of sysargv. I'm just going to refer to these as args because that's going to be a little bit easier. And instead of the very first thing, we want to grab the zero thing because we are just going to be passing the second parameter instead of what kind of scraper are we running, etc. Let's collapse this down and we want to bring the same change over to the other script. We'll go into main.py, put args here in the default and instead of the sku, we'll put zero over here and one over here. So decrement everything by one. We will then go into the main of the wiki. Again, put args here over here, over here, over here, and over here. Decrement everything by one and make sure that we have zero over here. Let's close these main.pies and the main main.py, we're gonna open up the terminal. We're going to exit the Python repo. Let's clear this and bring up this command again where we're gonna go into blog and get two blogs. Let's run this and we're getting blogs, amazing. Now let's get rid of this output that we have over here. I'll collapse down the terminal. We're going to go into setup pi and instead of scrape wiki, let's get rid of all of this stuff. We're going to change this to just be scrape. And then instead of wiki, we're going to go straight to the main function, which is over here in main pi. And then all we need is the default function. Let's put this over here. So def default function body, grab the body and indent it. I've placed a little backtick over here. This is what the application looks like now. Let's open up the terminal. We're going to back out to the main folder where setup.py is located. I'm going to run pip install dash e dot. This is now going to give me the scrape command where I can say I want to scrape blog and I want to get the two blogs. If we collapse down the terminal, what happened now is our application became modular. We have module one, module two, module three. And if we keep adding modules, our scrape command becomes more powerful. This is scalability. We no longer need to update setup.py. Furthermore, on the point of extensibility, if somebody gets the tool, all they need to do is develop their own module if we have a bunch of tools that surround their module that they can use inside the module, all they can do is take their module, place it amongst other modules. They can integrate their spider into this wider thing that we are building. So just how we're passing the arguments down into the main of the blog, we can create some kind of tool. Let's say that this is going to be a tool and the tool is just going to be some function. So just some fun. This is going to return hello world. This tool that we can pass down for other people to use. This can be some function, some module, some class, anything. And then we'll get passed down into the entry point. Anybody who is then implementing a scraper can accept this tool and use it well as intended. So in this case, it would be invoked and we would have to print this. So print, we'll say test add whatever result of tool is going to be. I'll add a colon in the space. Let's open up the terminal, reinstall, scrape block to again, and we'll see how the function that we have passed down has been invoked and used however we wanted to use it 
within the module that we were building. If a tool that we're passing around doesn't want to be consumed, so let's say we will reinstall this and rerun, but we'll see that at this point we're going to get an error. So if we say we may accept zero or more tools, so I may be passing 10 tools or zero tools, I'll just say, look, there may be some kind of keyword arguments. So then you as the creator of the framework will need to make sure when you're passing down the parameters, you are assigning them to keywords. So then if somebody wants to consume keyword args, they can get them as keys from this quarks thing. Let's reinstall. If we scrape block two, we will see that in quarks, what gets passed down is a tool, a function under the tool key. So whatever key you specify, that function or that tool will be supplied under that parameter. And if the underlying function doesn't want to actually use the tool, it doesn't need to get it from the quarks, but it will need to add this parameter in order to essentially abide by the shape that you're using. Let's come back to main.py and remove this malarkey over here. Remove the some fun. And this will be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've learned how you can use dynamic module imports in Python in order to make your code a little bit more flexible, giving you scalability and potential extensibility. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the comment section. If you like my work or you would like to get the source code, you can come support me on Patreon. Very, very big thank you to all of the patrons that are already supporting me. Your help is very much appreciated. Again, thank you for watching and hope you have a good day.